Lee, as you well know, multiple universes, discrete, other universes cut off, squeezed off from our own, are very popular among physicists and cosmologists. You've made a fascinating comment that equated multiple universes with trying to find an intelligent designer in the universe, that both are s had some sort of equivalence. Now, those sound like fighting words to me. And certainly they are. <laughs> The question is, can we explain what we see and what we observe in our universe entirely in terms of what we can observe in our universe? Or do we need to posit unobserved entities? Now, there's two ways that can end up. It can be that the unobserved entities turn out to be real because we can observe them. We, you know, we used to think there was a solar system only, then we thought there was a galaxy only, then we observed other galaxies and so forth. So the range of what we can observe and theorize about expands. But here's what I worry about. In the history of astronomy and physics, every time our scope of observation, the scale of observation, expanded just an order of magnitude, just by a factor of 10, there were surprises. Every time we saw a factor of 10 smaller, there were surprises. So. As, as much as I respect and admire you know, these people, my colleagues, when they talk about using the laws we know now and expanding the scope of the universe by you know, 10 to the 20, 10 to the whatever, I worry. I worry that be long before we get to the phenomena that they're interested in, there will be surprises. Okay, I mean, that, that's one point, uh, but just the fact that we can't see it. I agree that there's a, a fundamental difference. As we've progressed in astronomy and cosmology in the past, we've always been able to see yes. when we made the step. We could see what it was. We didn't maybe didn't know what it was before, and we, then we understood it and we saw it. Now, when we're dealing with multiple universes, it, it sounds like in principle we're not being able to see it, although possibly we can have leakage of some different kinds, but we're not being able to see it. But but uh, in, th that doesn't make it wrong by, on its own. It makes it maybe inconvenient. But th you, you don't believe that the universe ends with what we can see, do you? Do you think that's it? You think no. there's a, there's a... So, that, so you, can pu you can push me there. <laughs> but still, the question is, can we, within the theory that we're positing, make predictions that can be tested, that can be verified, that if they're wrong, they falsify ideas, that is, they force us to give up ideas. Otherwise, there's no discipline. I mean, you know, imagine if, you know, if you're doing the financial management of a company, okay, and you have a problem with the balance, and you say, well, actually, it's part of a much vaster economy, and it doesn't matter if I balance the books here, because overall, they'll balance. Not okay. Sure. Yeah, I, 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 I see the analogy. And, and, I'm not and, sure I totally agree with it, but, but. And, and, and what I worry about is that it's so easy to get carried away and begin to believe your theoretical speculations. I think that's legitimate. I think that's an entirely legitimate point. But on the other hand, you, you can't just say you, you have to be limited by, by what at this moment you want to subject to your own prejudice of having an, a, a definitive observation. By definition, we know that if anything beyond what light has traveled since at least our local Big Bang, we can't see by definition because light has only so much time to travel. Light is the ultimate speed limit and that's it. 13.7 billion years, whatever it is. That's it. And, and you've said that you are not you're not willing to say that's the end. There must be something beyond that. Whether it's a foot beyond that or any, you know, 10 to the hundredth beyond that. Who knows? So let's distinguish two things. Okay? The, in the cutting edge of science, there's always a lot of play. There's a lot of speculation. Controversy is natural. People have to try ideas that stretch us and that provoke us. That's fine. I, I, I have nothing against that. But in science, science is this crazy thing where there's imagination, but there's also the discipline of experiment. Absolutely. There's rebellion and there's respect for the tradition. And the, the strength of science is that these coexist. So the burden is on any of us, and I have my own speculations about cosmology and so forth. The burden is on us to 
gain from our speculations arguments that will pre- that will convince a skeptic and it's not enough to have a beautiful idea it's not enough to have it seem coherent you ha- the question is if a skeptic comes in good faith they're trained as a scientist they know what you know they evaluate evidence the same way that you do but they have no commitment to your ideas will they be convinced and that's what makes science powerful that's what makes science sure, strong sure and these ideas are in the realm of play of speculation andre linde's and martin rees's as well as mine and none of them have gathered evidence for them that could convince a skeptic one of the problems i think we have is that by arguing from past history that we've always been able to make observations of things that we know runs up against the fact that we've progressed so far so fast that we've run out of that option i mean we've got to the end because we can't see beyond what we're now seeing and this is a product of our fantastic technology in in, in a very short period of time but there may be a qualitative difference in where we are today than where we were in the past there may be but there's also something else that's happened which which worries me which is that when i was in graduate school we were concerned with this one universe every theoretical seminar almost right. every theoretical seminar was connected with some experiment the purpose of what we did as theoreticians in physics and cosmology was to explain the observations of this one world okay somehow over the last 25 30 years it became okay to theorize about possible universes it became to the point that most of the theory consciously doesn't describe our universe it describes other possible universes and it's worthwhile to understand our theories better to study such theories i'm not against it but my sense is we take it too seriously now why do we posit multiple universes again whether you know reeses or andre linde's kind or my kind coming from black holes giving birth to baby universes um we do that because there are questions about the laws of physics about the history of the universe that we can't yet answer within right. the confines of a hypothesis that there is just the one universe that we observe right so there's this temptation we're driven to look at other universes to look at the hypothesis that our universe is one of many but we're taking a big risk and we should know that I think that's fair uh to say that we're taking the risk but uh on the other hand because where we may be today because we're seeing the limit of what's possible to see based on our understanding of our local big bang at least that we may be at a, a time that's different from all other times we may be but it also may be that we just have to try a little harder and work a little harder And to have competing theories in the marketplace uh, of ideas is terrific and I think everyone should encourage it but I don't think one should limit an idea today because it's 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 its capacity to be predictive as were theories in the past are not as good as they were we may be pushing boundaries that have never been pushed before I disagree and you may be right but the worry is that when we go outside of the discipline that comes from having to make predictions we open up the human capacity for speculation for imagination for fantasy and the problem is how do we come back from that science has been so successful there's always been speculation there's always been you know if you look at newtonian physics and if you want to you know if you look at what newton really thought about he was a theologian he was a mystic right. there was a lot of it that was way outside of what we call science as great a scientist he was but that which lasted was the core which connected to experiment yes and my belief is i don't think our time is less philosophical you know in a way the 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 you know newton was not less speculative than in his theology and his 
mysticism then in his alchemy than the cosmologists of today are. But the cosmologists of the future will be able to do what we can't do, which is pick out of the cosmological speculation of today what really led to knowledge. And just like we pick from Newton the few years of his work that gave us what we call Newtonian physics, and we, most of us, except a few scholars, are unaware of all of the rest, okay? my belief is that the cosmologists of the future will pick out something from our period which will turn out to have led to insight and knowledge and understanding, and the rest will you know, be explained as the tenor of the times, the fantasies of the times, just like we do for Newton. And that's fine, and the wonderful thing about doing science is that we don't know which it is that they'll pick out. <laughs>